Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video, so I figured I'd just uh, kind of, you know, hit record and uh, you can kind of visit me in my shop, if you will. If this is what, well, this is what I call a shop. It's all I got, so I'm going to work with what, I, what I'm given, so. Um, <clears throat> today, I had some other plans, but I, you know, it's the great thing about being a single dude. You get to kind of do whatever you want. You can change your mind whenever you want, and you're not affecting anybody. Um, I came in here to straighten out the shop, and I'm like, well, I need to get the tools off the bench, uh, the rest of them, and no better place than the tool chest. So let's go ahead and uh, restore the other tool, the second tool chest I got, and fill that up with um, all the other tools on the bench. Um, because <clears throat> believe it or not, the tool chest that, uh, that I, I restored, uh, that you guys have been watching, if you've been following me, that one is completely packed full of tools. I can't fit any more tools in it. And I still have a ton more tools. Um, now granted, I won't even fit all of my tools even into the second tool chest, but that is what it is. <clears throat> um, but I'll at least get a vast majority of them off of the bench and into the tool chest. Um, and that way I can work out of the tool chest instead of everything that's on, uh, on my bench. So I went ahead and cleaned everything on the tool chest. Uh, I cleaned everything on the tool chest with some Murphy's, uh, oil soap and you can't even see it. Well, you know what it looks like. Just watch the previous video. But I went ahead and cleaned everything with the Murphy's oil soap and tightened every screw. I think there's, I, I totaled it up. It was even more once I opened it up. But I think there was like a hundred, close to 150 uh, screws on that, <laughs> on that chest uh, between the, the bolts and screws for the hinges, all of the corner plates, that's where most of it is, is on the corner plates and on the, um, all the, all the brass hardware that's on the corners and, and that are holding all the joints, not necessarily holding the joints together, but protecting them, uh, which is, you know, helped the chest last this long. Uh, that and the hardware and the casters on the bottom. Uh, oiled up the casters. They spin like brand new skateboard bearings. It's pretty awesome. Um, got everything tight and right, cleaned it up. <clears throat> now I'm just going, I let it sit and uh, dry out in the sun um, for a lot of the day. Got it warmed up. <clears throat> and now I'm going to apply some, uh, some BLO. I'm going to do a BLO on the drawers, for one, I love, I absolutely love, I don't know what it is, but I love the smell of boiled linseed oil, or linseed oil in general, and I love the smell of beeswax. Um, but, so I'm gonna do these in boiled linseed oil, that way it kind of, the, the whole chest smells and just reeks of boiled linseed oil, <laughs> like my other tool chest. Um, I just love it. Um, but I, like I said, I also love the smell of beeswax. It's like you're walking into Michael's or something. Uh, I always enjoyed that smell, uh, having to follow my mother in there when I was a kid. But that's what it reminds me of, uh, my mom. And so I said, well, what, what better to do than just combine the two? So I went ahead and made a mixture of, and I didn't really, I didn't count like, I didn't um, uh, you know, measure out how much beeswax, how much boiled linseed oil, how much of this and how much of that that I put in there. But um, I think, I mean, hopefully it turns out all right. I just did a double, double boil pot whatever you know just got a pot of boiling water had a mason jar 
actually an old spaghetti jar. Uh, put a couple chunks of beeswax in it, then uh, filled it, I guess, I don't know about that much with uh, actually about maybe an inch or two of bull linseed oil. This is after the wax is in there. And then I also put in some uh, extra virgin olive oil. <clears throat> um, I really just didn't feel like getting any more BLO in there and, and getting it. And so I just poured what I had available next to the stove. <laughs> so we'll see, I'm, I'm curious to see how that turns out. I boiled that up, put it into a little, um, Container. Nothing's just manly confidence like a mouthful of it. And it's still cooling down right now, but. So get a smile you'll be proud of without the wire. It's got a. Um, smile direct club can straighten most. It's got a good smell. It's the perfect smell between. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what you would think it'd smell like. Plus, with clear aligners. It almost smells like rich and sweet. Visit smiledirectclub.com to take your free assessment. I don't know what it is. It's, I can smell all three of them. I didn't think I'd be able to do this, but it smells super sweet. I can smell the EVOO. I can smell the BLO. And I can smell the beeswax. It's awesome. <laughs> I turned out uh, that was a happy, co happy uh, coincidence, happy accident. Uh, I'm going to use this for the, for the inside and outside of the case. Uh, of the uh, carcass. Um, this has, uh, you know, it has the beeswax in it, so hopefully it'll help preserve and it doesn't break down the, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, that lizard skin patinaed looking paint job that's, um, whatever it was, whatever finish they had on there, it's all chapped and scaly now, so. I think it looks cool and I want to keep it or I would have just sanded it off. Um, hopefully this protects it and makes it last a little bit longer. But these I'm going to do just in BLO so I just figured I'd turn on the, turn on the camera and kind of chitty chat. While, uh, while we get down doing some applying this on the, uh, on the trays. And like I said, this is just straight BLO. And I, I have no, whenever I apply um, oil and seed oil, I, actually I don't always wear gloves. I just, I know you're supposed to and whatever. I really just don't care. <laughs> um, all the safety sallies out there can pack sand for all I care. Um, I do have some all natural boil and seed oil or uh, all natural yeah, natural boil linseed oil that has, um, or maybe it's just, oh, just straight up linseed oil <clears throat> that, uh, that I picked up. Um, I'm going to use that on two things, either fine projects or, um, food grade stuff. If I want to make a cutting board or, uh, carve a spoon or whatever, then I can go ahead and, uh, and use the food grade, you know, something that's not going to kill you if you drink it. Uh, but I, I really just like to apply this with my hands and then I'll wipe off the excess after about 10 minutes or so. And then I'll apply it a couple times and then, uh, and that's it. Nothing to it. But I like to have it in a little jar bigger than the, the bigger than the, the tin that uh, it comes in just because it's easier to dip your fingers in it. But it's just so much easier to apply with your hands than with a rag. You just kind of get it all up in there. <clears throat> Let the wood soak it all up. I'll tell you, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that... Uh, I'll be retiring next year <clears throat> and well, I need to shave a little bit off there. <clears throat> um, I'll be retiring next year and beginning the next chapter of my life, which is going to include a 
ton of building, timber framing, log cabin building, uh, all kinds of different building techniques and joinery and this and that, <clears throat> uh, different kinds of wood and timbers. So I'm doing a lot of research in that area to figure out how I'm going to do everything. <clears throat> but I'm also um, uh, amassing tools because I, I have a lot of tools, but there are some, some tools that I buy tools for two reasons. A, I'm going to use them now or in the future. And B, uh, the second main reason that I buy them is I'm going to, I couldn't pass up a smoking hot deal. And it's not that I'm going to collect it because I'm not a tool collector. I use the tools that, uh, that I'm, I'm purchasing. But if I get a smoking hot deal on something that I know is, you know, say I know something is worth fully restored and in good working order and everything, um, if it's worth a lot of money, say it's worth a hundred bucks and I'm getting it for ten dollars, you know, I can't I can't pass that up. And I don't have it sitting in front of me, but I actually did do just that. I picked up a. a I was at my Habitat for Humanity store um, and just happened to stumble upon like a treasure trove of old, old uh, hand work, you know, woodworking hand tools. <clears throat> some of them not so great, some of them were in pretty good condition. So I picked up what was cheap and left the rest for somebody else to enjoy and, and whatnot. Um, Uh, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep those and, and then I'll restore them, you know, kind of like I'm doing right now. I'm just, I'll restore them when I get time and I will sell them off um, to somebody I know or sell them off uh, on eBay or something or... Um, And hopefully, you know, the, the, the hope is that they go, that they find their way into a young woodworker's um, arsenal of tools. I wouldn't send it out unless it's perfect or, you know, close, you know, uh, an outstanding tool. And, and like I said, in hopes that you know, a young woodworker, young in age or young to the craft, um, can pick it up, enjoy it, learn from it, use it, become its best friend. You all know how that is. And yeah, that way they're not sitting on a shelf somewhere, rusting away or getting picked up by that 75 year old man that is going to do nothing but, you know, sit it on his shelf and let it collect dust the rest of its life. Tools need to be used. That's what they're for. You know, use them. So that's that's why I pick up tools. And then every now and then, um, on very few occasions, but. Um, I do collect a few little tools, a few little things um, that maybe I'm going to use, maybe I'm not going to use, but I don't do it excessively. I'm not a hoarder of tools where nobody else is going to be, you know, that's just not right to have a ton of tools that nobody's ever going to use, you know, passing along, trading tools, you know, that. You know, so that they can get used. That's what it's all about. <clears throat> and, you know, just like, uh, it's been some time now, but Chris from Chop with Chris uh, sent me a broad axe. Uh, a broad axe head that I have to handle and, and uh, so I can use. 
Uh, well, obviously, I'm not going to start using it right away. Uh, I'm not hewing logs for a timber frame house right now, but I am going to start practicing a lot with it, even with, you know, making... I'm going to be making some... Uh, some landscaping timbers. Uh, just have I have some correct size logs. Um, not bad, huh? I didn't I didn't scrape it all off, and I just kind of cleaned it up, let it dry, and now I'm sealing it. I'm sealing that that character in there. There's like just paint dribbles, and you know I love that. That's cool. I just want to preserve it. Um, but so anyway, I got that, so I get that, the, uh, broad axe, the hewing axe head from Chop with Chris. Thanks, Chris. Again, I appreciate it, man. That was, that was amazing. You're a good, good man. Um, and when, when it, but when it comes to a point where I'm not using it, guess what? I, I don't know. I mean, if it has sentimental value from all the logs that I've hewn with it, that's, that's a little different. I may hang that one on the wall. Uh, plus it has a little bit of um, sentimental value now that it was given to me by another uh, woodworker of the same, um, with the same passion, you know, nothing but hand tools and doing things the old way. Uh, but if I have tools that I'm not using, I'm going to sell them, give them away, pass them on to somebody that can use them. I'm not going to sit them on my shelf and let them just rot away, rust away, collect dust. And if I was that tool, I'd be pissed off if you did that to me. So use them. Oh, and It's, I, I'm not going to grab it because my hands are all oily right now, but Chris, that, uh, that broad axe is sitting right over there and it's, it's, it's on the chopping block, on the chopping block. We'll call, we'll say that to get a handle. I've never made a handle for a hewing axe before. I got to figure out a way to, to steam, steam bend the wood, um, to do it properly, you know, and so I got to learn that process. I know I could do it real down and dirty, but I want to, you know, whenever I learn a new process like that, I want to be able to kind of engulf myself in the process and, and learn everything that I can about it and then go out and do it. Usually the product turns out much better that way. Um, sometimes you get lucky. Like, uh, like with my little mixture down there, the uh, olive oil, uh, BLO, and beeswax. That was just a. That's just kind of cool. That that makes me that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Um. <clears throat> but where I was going with that from the beginning is. So I've been amassing a bunch of tools that I don't have, things that I, I say that I don't have, that I, I haven't, I have things, but I've been, we'll call it making do with what I've got, but I had this epiphany like, hey, wake up, dummy, you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life, right? <clears throat> Might as well invest some money and get the right tools for the job and uh, and enjoy the process even more and so I started pulling the trigger on a lot of things and I just I don't know what the God was smiling on me and has put some amazing tools at amazing prices in amazing condition in front of me and at just the right time because I, I i looked but i could never find good deals anywhere on on a lot of tools they're just overpriced i'm like okay i'll just keep making do and 
you know, then you, you, you end up not never owning that tool, never having the satisfaction of using that tool. Um, if you if you do what I do, or you're thinking about it, uh, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so I've been I've been gather. I don't want to say I have been amassing this tool collection, getting ready for retirement, where I will be building many structures, not just a house, but first thing I'm going to do is build a workshop so I can work uh, when it's raining and snowing and everything else. Uh, and then I'm going to build a house. Uh, the thought right now is not final, but the thought right now is a, a style similar, similar to you know, a timber frame, a timber frame with log walls, similar to the, uh, not quite the same, but similar to the construction. If you watch uh, the YouTube video, um, Birth of a Wooden House by Northman. Just type in Northman, Birth of a Wooden House, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Many of you out there who are still hanging with me on this video, if you're hanging with me this long, you know you have Northmen on your uh, your channel already, and you you know you have that channel saved, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but <clears throat> so I, I've been amassing these tools for this for this adventure coming up, this journey that I've got. Now whether I stay out there full time or not, that's undecided yet. Uh, I guess we'll see how it goes. I'm not saying that I'm going to stay out there forever. Um, but I will spend a mass amount of time out there uh, in the beginning and all throughout by the rest of my life. You just don't sell off the property you put your heart and soul into like that. I will pass that down to my kids. And the grandkids will end up there and they'll just all be reminiscing about grandpa, hopefully. <laughs> but, you know, I'll fly my grandkids out there to the cabin and teach them how to hunt and fish and, you know, show them how grandpa does things. That's, that's, that's the money shot right there. And of course I'll be alone, you know, I'll be doing all of this by myself. I'll probably have some help a little bit from time to time. Um, <clears throat> with the help of my buddy Roger. Uh, my best friend who doesn't even watch the videos. Uh, but... So I've been gaining all these tools and I just kind of wanted to share with you how I get them, where I get them. Um, and Chris uh, from Chop with Chris gave me some good advice. He said, videotape the auction, right? For, you know, certain things or whatnot. So I did. I just don't know. I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to upload the video. I, I film with my computer and... You know, I try, I upload it straight from my computer. It's that simple. That's, that's why I can make videos uh, so easily, I guess. It's easy. Uh, I don't sp have to spend a lot of time. Um, and it's not that I'm going after ease I'm, or, or being, trying to not have to, you know, I'm not trying to find the easy way out. I'm trying to find a way that keeps me doing things that I want to be doing because I don't have a whole lot of time. And the last thing I want to do is stop and spend a, a weekend or whatever trying to figure out how to how to video edit. And if somebody wants to come come over here and teach me how to do it, 
Great, but trying to learn it on my own, I'm not very computer savvy. So that would be a process for me to try and learn that all on my own from scratch. I mean, I'm sure I could watch a YouTube video or two and figure it all out pretty relatively quickly, but I don't want to become a video, a video, video, whatever you call it yourselves, video, videographer, whatever, cinematography, I'm not trying to get into that, I just want to, I just want to, you know, do my thing, woodworking, some blacksmithing, uh, restorations, you know, my thing. Um, but I will, I will learn how to edit before I start my homestead build. That's, that's a gimme because the, uh, the video birth of a wooden house by Northman has inspired me so much that <clears throat> there's a couple of channels that I, I'd like keep queued up on my computer because they inspire me so much uh, towards my future. And those channels are Northmen, right? You have, I have a couple of videos of theirs that I watch regularly. You have Birth of a Wooden House, which I watch for obvious reasons. Uh, I could sit and watch that over and over and over Trying and I can learn something new about that every time I watch it. And they've got another video out uh, called Hymn of the Northmen. That was probably one of the most inspiring videos for me because that's like exact the guy that's in that video reminds me of who I want to be. So it kind of helps me put it into perspective how I want to live and, you know, how it's just, it's, it's, I, I can't really explain it. Those of you that have seen the video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then they came out, they just came out with a new one and I watch that sucker every morning and every night before I go to bed. And that's called uh, the Northman Code, or the Code of the Northman, something like that. All right, it's the code. Watch it. It's not very long, and it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I love that smell. <clears throat> All right. So these guys are kind of done. I'll set them over here. And the other channel that inspires me tremendously, doesn't even realize it, is uh, Mr. Chickadee. So Josh from Mr. Chickadee has inspired me so much lately just and what's funny is he never talks in his ever. He never says a word in his videos. But he's probably, I don't know, I think he's around 100,000 subscribers. He doesn't say one word. His craftsmanship and his, his adventure, his journey uh, of doing what he's doing, <clears throat> him and his wife, um, it, speaks, it speaks for itself. And he knows that. His followers know that. There's just something about it. The way he carries himself, the way that he, he even like dresses, period. He, he acts, he looks, everything, the way he does things. It's very inspiring uh, for somebody like me. Um, <clears throat> but he did and he's doing uh, what I plan to do. Uh, thankfully for him, he's a lot younger than <laughs> than I am, so I get to enjoy it much, much longer. Uh, but um, 
Yeah, just sitting there watching his videos, watching how he does things, lessons he's learned. You know, I can learn from him over and over and over all day long. Um, so those are the two channels that, that I keep queued up all the time. Like the second they put a video out, I'm watching it, right? Um, of course, I'm not always sitting in front of my computer, but you get the, you, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, so I did, I have picked up quite a few tools and, and I'll, maybe I'll shoot another video, um, <clears throat> kind of going over what, what tools I have acquired. I have acquired a lot of, not just a lot of tools, but a lot of major tools, um, in the past, probably one to two months, we'll say. <clears throat> um, I picked up, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show them to you in another video, but I'll go ahead and tell you what all I bought. And I probably won't be able to even remember all of it. Um, I've been to, I have been to auctions, swap meets, flea markets, uh, Garage sales, yard sales, um, Craigslist finds. Uh, here's a for instance, right? <clears throat> I was I've been looking for a treadle stone, a treadle sharpening stone, right? Kind of sit on you pedal. It's got the big wheel on it, right? And it's it turns and you know you keep going. You sharpen your axes and your chisels and all your all your irons and blades and whatnot right <clears throat> at least for rough sharpening stuff <clears throat> so i was looking for one and i picked one up a couple i guess a couple months ago now but it had a it had a i mean there's always one or two things that i want to change or combine with something else so um i had i found that one on craigslist pretty good deal it was a good stone uh the only thing that I didn't care for about it was it had a flywheel on one side, which disengages the pedal for that one side. So you're pedaling with one foot instead of two feet, which is annoying. If you've ever used treadle stones, um, two feet is better than one. <laughs> um, you just have to experience it. It's, it's once you put that tool, I mean, yeah, you can keep it going free like that, but once you put that tool to the wheel, it starts to slow down. And then if it slows down and you don't have the rhythm going in the right, uh, at the right speed, it's going to s slow the wheel down so much that when you, it won't make a full revolution. And then when you press down, it'll start spinning the wheel the other way. So having that second, having both, both pedals is, is, it's a, it's a big deal, or at least having a long throw on the one pedal, but you don't have that option when you buy something that's pre-made like that. Um, I could just make my own. I have the stone now, and that I have both. I have two stones now. So I I went. I, I had to drive an hour. I guess about an hour to an about an hour and a half. I guess. Uh, to pick up the one stone and it cost me 150 bucks, which is actually a pretty good deal. Um, it's a little bit smaller stone and, <clears throat> uh, and it's, but it's got that flywheel on it, which I could take the flywheel off. That'd be a kind of a pain in the butt. And I'd have to make another attachment, a little adapter for the, uh, for the pedal to hook up to, cause they lost that part when they installed the, uh, when they installed the flywheel to be run by a motor or some kind of belt driven apparatus. <clears throat> so then I got, I got up this last, then it was great. I'm, I mean, I was, I had to true up the stone and everything. So I'm working on that. I'm, I, I'm, I need to restore it fully, take it down to, to bare metal and, and fully restore everything, true up the wheel and all that jazz on that one. So then I wake up on Saturday, this last Saturday morning, and I mean, I was still in my pajamas. I was still in my pajamas, and I hadn't even taken my first sip of coffee yet. 
I go outside, I'm sitting on my front porch and I jump on Craigslist and I type in, I think I typed in like just sharpening. <clears throat> and the second picture there was this beautiful treadle stone. Didn't have a price on it or anything like that. But the thing was, it, what it was like it was meant to be. I mean, I could have damn, and this, I'm searching all of Seattle, the entire Seattle area, right? So this is giving me places that I, it would take me three, four hours to get to. And fate would have it, I could literally walk to this place where the stone was. It was, it was not even a five minute drive. I mean, literally, I could have walked there in less than an hour. <clears throat> Probably less than a half an hour. Anyway, uh, I digress. <laughs> um, so I get, I, I, I saw that, and I'm like, oh, crap. You know, I need to get there. I need to hurry. And then they, I, I see that they didn't open until a certain time. And so I waited to that time. I kind of threw myself together as quick as I could. I got in the car. I drove there. I was the first person there. I like literally arrived the second they opened. And first person there, I walked up, kind of looked around like I wasn't interested and stuff and whatnot. And then I did, but I didn't see, I didn't see the treadle stone. So I asked the lady, those two older gals uh, that did like an impromptu garage sale yard sale thing they were like still toting stuff out into the yard and, and whatnot and i'm like hey so i saw on craigslist you guys have a treadle stone uh, a sharpening stone sharpening wheel i wanted to look at and uh she goes oh yeah you want to take a look at that old dusty rusty thing it's you know we'll, well, let's go up in the garage and it's in the corner it's in the back corner and so we go across the street and up into the garage and there it sits it's a beautiful much larger wheel because the other one I had been worn down pretty good. This was a much larger wheel. It has one tiny chip in it. The rest of it is clean and there's there's no cracks, no splits, no big chips or anything. The corners are square. It's true. Uh, it even has like a nice little, the, the little um, splash guard that comes up in front of the seat. It's like cast iron. It's got some embossed like countries and stuff on it and whatnot. And it's got a little a little water well, which I I know that's improper to a degree uh, for certain things. But anyway, <clears throat> no flywheel. Beautiful stone, and it you sit on it. It's even er more ergonomically correct than the first stone. And she goes, what? Long story short, we ended up settling on, on a price for this sucker. Now, if you've been on eBay and you look for them or you're on Craigslist or you've talked to people that are selling them, you know these things can go anywhere from 150 bucks to over five, 600 bucks, depending on what condition they are and things like that. I've seen them go a lot more than that, too, in beautiful condition. But <clears throat> I picked this thing up for a smoking 80 bucks. I still feel a little guilty, but she sold it while the husband wasn't there. You know? You snooze, you lose, pal. <clears throat> um, and honestly, I mean, no, but they weren't using it. It went to somebody that it's not going to sit in, 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 you know, in the corner of my garage and collect dust and rust. I'm going to use it. So it went to a good home. That's at least the, the comfort that they can they can leave with. And they walked away with 80 bucks that they didn't they didn't have that morning. So works out, I guess, for, for all of us. And then, um, so I've got a lot of tools out here from the auction that I went through on Saturday. Um, I'm sitting here staring at something that I really, <clears throat> I, 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 I don't know if I should show you or not. You could probably see it. I'll go ahead and show you. This is the one piece that I did film the auction on. <clears throat> and <laughs> this is one thing it's like 
passion for a carpenter, right? I dig old tools. I dig big, beefy, manly tools, right? So you get a big, a nice big axe that's sharp and it's just hefty and it's just, just screams, man. I'm like, I gotta have it, right? So um, I've been watching these kind of like a few other uh, YouTubers out there and, and uh, I felt like I was like the last guy to the party, like, I see all these people getting, you know, kind of like coming to, uh, coming, you know, getting their luck and, and finding this, uh, this item. Um, and then I felt like, what, how come I'm not getting any good deals, right? And then again, I was blessed at that last auction just down the road. It pops up, they have one. And... Typically, these things sell pretty expensive, um, but I, I didn't pick it up because I'm going to restore it. I didn't pick it up because I'm necessarily going to use it. This is what I'm talking about. I picked it up because it speaks to me in a in a, in a, a deeper tone that I, I it speaks to my soul, and it's beautiful to look at. Yeah, I'll go ahead and show you. So it's called a whale back saw. And this is it. So, as you can see, it's massive. It is massive. And this, this saw will never leave my possession until I die. And girls, if you're watching this video, Make sure the sucker goes to a good home. Make sure it goes to a good home. <laughs> I gotta give her a name. If you could think of a name, a good name, shoot it to me. Give me a shout out and uh, we'll give her a name. Not that I won't use her, I will use her, but I didn't buy her to necessarily to use. And uh, I got a couple of couple of older planes um, here, not real recent, but recent enough. Uh, just some old coffin planes. Um, I, this this piece of wood right here is so heavy, you can't really you can't see it. I I can't explain it. It's just you pick something up and you're like, oh okay, and you're like, wow, that is heavy. It's dense. I don't know what wood it's made out of, but I'm assuming it's, I'm assuming that it's like iron wood or some kind of, it's dark, so iron wood, it's not ebony, maybe a really old redwood? I don't know. I've never dealt with redwood, even though I kind of live close to them. I don't know, but it's got... It's got a concave shape to it. Um, this came as a box lot, but this is one of the planes that I was super excited about in that lot. Um, if you know what this shape is called, I can't, re I, I, I know it, but I can't remember what it's called. This plane is called something when it has that shape. So if you can remember, if you know, give me a shout out, leave me a comment. Um, oh, and I picked up I'm not a big fan of the screw type plow planes, but this one was in really good shape and it came with the uh, with one of the box lots that I picked up at the auction. Um, yeah, nothing really special about it, not yet anyway, but it's in really good condition. All the parts are there, nothing's broken, it's in good shape. Um, I just need to restore it to, I mean, I say restore it. I can use it right now if I just sharpen the blade, the iron, but, um, that's not how I do business. So I'll sharpen it up. I'll tune it up, level out the skate, make sure everything's nice, tight and right. And I'll put her to work. 
<clears throat> there's just something if you if you've ever dealt with the two different kinds you'll know what I'm talking about there's a difference that I can't explain when you're putting a wooden plane this is one of my favorites by the way <clears throat> when you're putting a wooden jack plane over wood and you're put or you're putting like a like a a Bailey Patton plane, a Stanley plane, you know, all of mine are old, like from the turn of the century, but there's just, there's no comparison. I, I can't really, these are lighter. These are much lighter. Well, depending on what wood it's made out of, but these are lighter. They just flow better across the wood. Wood on wood is just so much better than, than metal on wood. Um, for me. Uh, I want to get a full set uh, of wooden planes <clears throat> just because I, I prefer them, but I also have my tried and true uh, full set, well, from three all the way to eight of Bailey, uh, Bailey patent planes from, that, from the turn of the century, that same era. So I've got a full set of those, but I want to get a full set of these uh, just so that I have them. It's always nice to have at least two of everything when you do what we do. Uh, these came in a box lot. Well, I take that back. I picked this plane up at a swap meet uh, yesterday. It was yesterday. I picked this up at a swap meet yesterday for five bucks. Or no, seven, seven bucks. I picked this up for seven bucks at the swap meet. And <clears throat> I don't know much about hybrid planes like this. Uh, they started making these uh, when they, before the metal, the all metal bodied. Um, so it's kind of in between this plane, a full wooden plane besides the iron, and a, then you have this plane and then you have the full metal bodied. Um, I don't want to get them out because then I got to pull my chest and everything out but you have the full metal Bailey patent planes. Um, I've never really messed with these too much, so I'm kind of curious about them. Uh, I've always looked at them as bastard planes, but it just looks like they screwed some hardware onto a two by four. That's what it looks like to me. You know, when you get this, you know this is made out of a chunk of wood and hand carved, uh, the, the whole opening for the iron, the throat, everything. You know, the handle is, is made separate. The, the wedge is made separate. The irons are usually a, much thicker. Um, but these have so much more character and so much, much more of a pleasure to use. It just looks like they screwed some metal onto a tube before. I mean, obviously it's not. There's a lot more that goes into it, but um, music is the ultimate escape. I don't know. It's just there's something about it between this and this. This is a whole lot more comfortable. You get a four, a full four fingers on this guy. That's why I love I love these cutouts right here because I can put a deeper handle on there for guys that have big hands and that want to get all four on there. So it's you know most planes. If you're new to this. They're three finger planes, right? So you get your bottom three fingers and however you want to hold it. I mean, I can barely get two on there or barely get three so it's more comfortable with two, but however you want to get on there to take your wood, it's usually you're riding down the frog with your, point, with your pointy finger. So you're doing one of these numbers where if you grab a plane like this guy, I can get all four fingers on there comfortably. You can't really see it, but I mean, that's where the top of the handle is. I'm good. I mean, it's just, this is like butter, man. I feel, it's just no better feeling in the world than this. Um, but yeah, this is like one of my new favorite tools. Uh, Auburn Tool Company. Auburn Tool Company. Uh, yeah.
made in the USA. Um, <clears throat> so I picked, so now I have two treadle stones that I have to restore. One needs more than the other. I can actually use the big one right now. I just need to clean off the rust and, and uh, give it a paint job. But that's about it. <clears throat> uh, so I got to do that. I got to restore both those treadle stones. I have two. I drove down. I got a smoking deal on two. One's a little bit larger than the other one, but I got uh, two um, blacksmith post drills. Uh, those are the kinds that, <clears throat> you know, you crank them and they have an auto advance for the drill chuck. Um, it's basically a, a hand crank drill press. And really, these are, these are uh, you know, both in really good shape. Uh, they just need to be restored. Um, you know, they've been, they were literally sitting in the corner of an old lady's barn. Her, her, her husband had passed away a number of years ago and they just been sitting there taking up space. So she sold them to me for dirt cheap and I went down, I had to drive six hours to get them. Um, so $20 in gas tacked onto the price and you know, 12 hours of driving is that was six hours there, six hours back, but well worth it. I came home with a trunk full of post drills <clears throat> and uh, the second or the third, the third. So now I have two stones that I got to restore. I have two post drills that I have to restore, and I will show you my my baby, my new baby. And I actually have two. They're not the same, but I'll show you one. And uh, yeah, you'll know you'll know exactly what I mean when you see it. Now this is something that I never would have bought until I until I, I started dreaming about building a homestead and, and all of the timber framing that is going to take place and all the woodworking that's going to be taking place uh, in the next decade and then some. But I'm gonna go grab it. This is gonna be pretty amazing. I love, I love this tool. She needs some love and attention. She's not quite she needs to be tuned up, but she's going to be beautiful when I get done with her. Hold on. This is my new girl. This is my new girl. So I'm a single guy, so I gotta have some kind of, gotta have some love in my life. So me and her are gonna have a few dates, but you gotta check this out. I don't want to move the computer, but this this popped up. And I couldn't have asked for a better. I know I, I prefer some people when it comes to these. These are called beam boring machines. That's their official title, right? Beam boring machine. And <clears throat> you use this to bore a hole in, in timber frame, right? So everything is. We kind of start over I guess. I'll go in more depth with this um, once uh, I'll go in more depth in a different video on all the big tools that I have to restore but kind of so you can kind of see what's coming up in the near future but this is just kind of like uh, my walk around of this guy this gal, this gal, it's my girl, right? Uh, some people, when it comes to boring machines, uh, most people have favorites, right? They're either a swan guy, right? This is a James Swan. Um, they're either a swan or they're a Miller, Miller's Falls guy or maybe they're a boss guy 
or you know there's a couple different makers out there um, I'm a swan guy I'm a swan guy I'm in love with swan and what made this very special for me I haven't seen this on any other drills uh, but I'll share it with you. I can bring it right down to the computer. It's one special little feature. Can you see it? So this right here, that's how you know for sure it's a swan. That is the embossment of, or a raised embossment, I guess, of a swan. There you go. Right here. So. So that's that. This is my baby. Like I said, she needs some work. Um, like all women. <laughs> And men, <clears throat> but she's gonna be loved. I'm gonna take good care of her. I'm gonna take real good care of her. Um, everything, the good thing is that all of the parts are here. There's nothing broken, there's nothing missing. Uh, thankfully, the handles are intact because that would be a pain in the butt to replace them. Um, properly anyway um, everything's free spinning um, all that good jazz so I just need to clean up the cast iron which isn't that rusty to begin with clean up the cast iron I do have to make a new base uh, just because this probably sat on the ground or just it got wet it was and wasn't dried off properly wasn't sealed correctly when they made it or something of that nature but over you know over the course of a hundred years this, you know this, this girl's probably a hundred years old or better <clears throat> um, it, it got kind of I mean it's it's solid I know I wouldn't have to but it would just be like it would just be not right you can see it kind of starting to rot away on this on the lower half you can see some dry rot happening. So I'm going to replace these rails. Uh, it doesn't look like it affected this center piece, so I'm probably going to keep that. I'll integrate that into the into the build, into the restoration, and I think I'm going to be able to salvage these two main rails and this headpiece, this top piece right here. Um, Everything else is, is in spectacular condition. I'm not missing any hardware. I'm not missing anything. Just need to replace some of the wood parts, clean it all up, get it all nice and, and uh, lubricated, and put it to work. One thing I am looking for, um, I actually got super lucky and found a full set for less, no, it was exactly 50 bucks. But I got a full set, well, minus one. I got a full set, almost, of Russell Jennings bits for this machine. For beam boring machines. Beam boring machines come with a half inch chuck. These are a half inch chuck. They're boxed up right now because I don't want to mess with them. Uh, they are, <laughs> I couldn't have got luckier. 50 bucks, 50 bucks. You can't even buy the regular augers that are in my kind of condition for four times that much. And I got a full set of, those are so rare, <clears throat> finding a full set. Okay, I'm missing the one inch, but I can, I can find that over time. But they're in, like I just went down to the Russell Jennings factory and pick them up. They're like brand spanking new. Like I don't, I literally, I don't think they've ever been used. There's not a speck of rust on them. It's amazing condition. 
And the only one that I'm missing out of the set is the one inch. But, so I order, I, I, I've got, I've got my girl here. Um, and she came with a two inch bit. But, the shank's too small. The shank's too small. I think I, what I'll do <clears throat> is probably end up turning it down. I'll turn down a little bit, get the shank just right for the length that I want. And then I'll either find or I'll make an adapter for it. And uh, we'll use it that way. We'll use an adapter for, um, for mating this guy because it's in good condition. I mean, it needs to be sharpened. Uh, but that's it. I mean, solid. Uh, I can also use this in a tea auger. <clears throat> what I may end up doing is using that on as a tea auger and then taking this other bit that I got. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. Maybe use it for practice. Because, I mean, look, whoever, whoever did this was an idiot. Look at that. I mean, the snail is totally smashed. <laughs> I could take this and practice. I mean, I am a machinist, so I understand the theory of the screw. Um, but I can literally chuck this up on a lathe or heck, even in a, in a, in a drill or something to get it to start turning and then just file new ones in there. I may just do that, <clears throat> but that way I can I can use an adapter for this guy, and uh, use this one as my main boring two incher with an adapter. Who knows? But I'm always I'm on the lookout for a for for an inch and seven eighths, an inch and seven eighths bit for the boring machine. Uh, I've got some other bits over here that are that are good to go for my inch and a half, um, my inch and a half mortises. Um, so we're good there. <clears throat> I'm still stoked about my my new. Uh, I have such a sweet tooth too, and this smells so sweet. I just want to eat it, but I can't. <laughs> I should have used my regular linseed oil um, without all the chemicals, my natural organic linseed oil, but I didn't, so I can't eat it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up now that it's almost, it's a little over an hour long. Thank you guys for all hanging there with me. If you, if you, if you hung for the whole hour and, you know, almost four minutes, you're the man or the woman. You rock. Uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, leave me a comment, uh, the comments are for everybody, so leave a comment, um, yeah, subscribe if you want to, and I guess I'll see you on the next video, I gotta go to bed now because I gotta go to work tomorrow, but, uh, it is what it is, so thanks for sharing the last hour with me, and, um, uh, I guess I'll see you soon on the next video. Bye.